Today I'm going to sew a mock-up of my shift using the pattern pieces I previously cut out of white cotton muslin and some spare white thread. I also have to mention the adorable pincushion that my mom made for me. This pincushion always makes it a joy to sew. Also from my mom are some hand-me-down creative memory scissors that I use for cutting thread. If you're into scrapbooking, you may recognize these. First things first, let's thread our needle. Now I'm going to sew the gusset, or the part that will make the armpit area, to the sleeve. I'll offset the two pieces by about a quarter inch so that I can fell the seam. For now though, I'm just going to baste the two pieces together. I'd like to note that this was before I had figured out what a good basting technique looked like. I could have done this much neater and faster by traveling right to left and by omitting the stab stitching. Here I am finger pressing that basted seam open to give it a nice crisp edge. Next I fold the sleeve over to form the sleeve length. Then I fold the gusset on the diagonal, being sure to leave the open edge in line with the sleeve opening. Be careful here, if you do this backwards you will end up with a sleeve that has no opening for your arm. I had to do this in a few different orientations before it made sense to my brain. Pin the pieces together, again leaving a quarter inch overhang to allow for felling the seam. Then sew along the entire length. It's pretty cool at this point to see two flat pieces of fabric turn into a recognizable sleeve in three dimensions. So I have just made a mistake here. I have just sewn the gusset to the wrong edge of the sleeve. So let me show you guys. This is what I have started on for the second sleeve, but I've sewed it on this edge. And if I try and like fold the sleeve over here and then do it in half, it's like, okay, then I would have to sew this together. Oh, that's not right. Um, also, if I did it this way, that almost seems right, except that then this would be like my big opening to put my arm through, and I would not have anywhere for the arm to go. I basically just need to take these stitches out and sew along here and then I will be back on track. By this point, I figured out a slightly better basting technique. Now that I have my gusset sewed on in the right direction, I can fold my sleeve over, fold the gusset on the diagonal, pin, and sew down the entire length of the sleeve. I have a perpetual problem with getting my thread caught in my pincushion. Why is the most convenient place to put the pincushion always in the direct path of the thread? The next step is to sew the gores to the bodies. Here I'm lining up the straight edge of the gore with the bottom side of the body. This will gradually widen the skirt to create a flare shape with lots of room for movement. So, this is where it differs a bit from the Burnley and Trowbridge tutorial that I'm following. Because of the way that I am trying to cut my fabric to get a yard and a half, I have two separate body pieces 
instead of one. So instead of like folding at the top of the shoulder, I'm gonna have a seam here. All right, so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about here, how I have two of the bodies pinned together. And this is the part that's gonna go at the top of the shoulder. So I'm gonna basically just kind of sew like, I don't know, maybe to there on either side just to attach them and then leave the middle part open because this is where I'm going to cut something like that for the neckline. After sewing the shoulders together, I open the seam and finger press it. Next I lay the sleeve inside the two bodies, lining up the top of the sleeve with that shoulder seam. I pin the two pieces together making sure to only pin the front of the sleeve to the front of the body and vice versa for the back. This will ensure that I don't sew my sleeve open and closed. Again, I do a quick back stitch to attach the pieces to one another. Once that's finished, I line up the rest of the body edges, pin, and sew. After repeating the same process on the other side, I fold the body in half to find the center point of the neckline and cut two vertical slits to allow space for my head to fit through. So last night I finished um, basting together my mock-up of my shift. I'm gonna try this on in just a minute and show you guys what it looks like fitted to my body. But first, I thought I would show you the fabric that I am going to use for the gown. So this is Ikea fabric. I had this when I was in college. Uh, it's a duvet cover and so the pillowcase like both sides are this really pretty like small floral pattern and so I thought it would be really pretty and go really well. The other side of it is this kind of striped fabric which might be good for something. I don't know if I'll use it in this uh, project but I think like this kind of stripe could work really well with something um, from the 18th century. Um, my only worry is I'm not sure if I'm gonna have enough of the floral. If I don't have enough to do like a full length gown with it, what I might do is I might modify and do like one of the little kind of like jacket things just over a plain petticoat. And I might even do like a silk petticoat. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do silk or cotton or wool. It was actually not uncommon to have these kind of like printed cottons paired with a really nice silk like it looks weird to the modern eye because we think of silk as being like a much fancier fabric than a printed cotton but during the 18th century these sorts of printed cottons were actually hard to come by and so they did pair them with silks um, but anyways i'm gonna go try this shift on and show you guys how it fits 